Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we've got a big, big show. All right, a show that a lot of you have been waiting for. A lot of you have been waiting for. I've been kind of biding my time because uh, we're talking about a lot of albums here. I'm going to do the Rolling Stones, all right? Studio albums. Now, I tossed around a couple different ways to do this. I tossed around doing it by era. I tossed it around because they have so many damn albums. I tossed around maybe just doing a top 10 favorites of the Stones. I almost did that. I was real close to just doing that. And then I decided, you know what? I'm going to tackle the whole kit and caboodle. All right, so we're just going to do the studio albums. I'm not going to do the live albums here. I'm not going to do, they have a lot of compilations. I am going to mention a couple of compilations towards the end. Um, and in this instance, you know, they, they put out uh, Blue and Lonesome a couple of years ago, which was basically an album of uh, blues covers. I normally don't include cover albums. I'm going to include it today because, you know, a good chunk of their early releases from the 60s were comprised of mostly cover songs. So I figured, you know what, if, if we got to include those albums, right? So I might as well include Blue and Lonesome. So this list is going to include that album, all right, as well as everything else they released, uh, studio albums over the years, right? Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to go from my least favorite to my favorite. I will say I don't, I don't really dislike any of these. There are some that are just kind of lackluster but there is stuff to like on them all right and then for me there's like uh, obviously the cream of the crop right so uh so we'll go through remember might as well just throw this out there now because i'm sure we're gonna get all sorts of people like oh i can't believe you ranked this album so low because we get it on every single video no how many how many many no matter how many times i say this all right this is not the definitive ranking of the rolling stones album these are just the way i prefer them if you prefer them differently all right you rank them differently that's totally cool all right. Instead of going on a tirade about the fact that I ranked one at number 10 and you think it should be at number two, just give us your ranking. All right. Rank all the albums, rank your top 10, whatever. All right. We all hear these differently. There's no right or wrong answer. Right. So everybody just have fun with this. Get some conversations going below in the comments section. All right. Talk about these Rolling Stones albums. because There's a lot of great ones. Right. So let's get started. So the bottom of my list, again, not a terrible album, not a very great album. It's OK. Not a lot of memorable stuff here. I'm going to go with uh, 2005's A Bigger Bang. Again, don't dislike it. You know, considering Stones are way up there in age, the fact that we get any kind of new music from them is pretty good. Uh, you know, there's some good tracks on here, but overall, it's just, to me, eh, it's just kind of lacking a little something. All right? It's, it's, it's an okay Stones album. Certainly nothing fantastic. Same thing, I'm going to go with Dirty Work. All right. Which came out, hold on, came out in 1986. So this, you know, album, kind of a messy time period in the history of the Rolling Stones. So uh, Keith Jack, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger almost switched those names around. Kind of not getting along too well, right? A little war of words going on here. We kind of put a halt to uh, Rolling Stones proceedings for a couple of years before they came back with Steel Wheels. Uh, you know, some a couple good songs on here. Like I think One Hits of the Body is a terrific song, right? Title track. Pretty good. Harlem Shuffle, kind of fun. Eh, the rest of it, it's okay. Not spectacular. Not an album I reach for too often. Same thing can be said with uh, Undercover. Oh, the night. At least in 1983. I dig the title track. Title track is fun. She Was Hot, good tune. Mm. All the way down. Eh, you know what I'm saying? Hard to find a lot of classics on this album. And it's very kind of early 80s sounding. You know, a lot of good grooves on there. Kind of a lot of urban sounds and what have you. But a great Rolling Stones album it is not. Black and Blue. All right, next up for me. Black and Blue came out in 1976. Of course, this was the first album with Ronnie Wood. Peering on guitar amongst a lot of other cats. Right, because they were, they were trying to figure out who was going to be their new new guitar player to replace Mick Taylor full-time. Not a bad album. You know, Hot Stuff is Cool. Crazy Mama, Fool to Cry, a spectacular song, probably the best song on the album. The rest of it, it's okay. Not a huge fan. All right, how about Emotional Rescue? Next up, Emotional Rescue came out in 1980, the follow-up to Some Girls. Not quite nearly as successful, but... 
Indian Girl. Title track, I actually dig the title track quite a lot. She's So Cold, fun song. Yeah, you know, the rest of it, it's good. It's not spectacular, it's good. Same thing can be said with Voodoo Lounge. All right, and you know, I, I could any day rank this a little bit higher. This is 1994, but it's got You Got Me Rocking on it, which I absolutely love. Blinded by Rainbows. Love is Strong. Handful of pretty good tracks. Again, this one suffers probably way too much material. It's what they were doing in the 90s, right, when CDs first really, really came into prominence. All right, now I'm going to go all the way back. Uh, I'm not an enormous fan of a lot of the really early, early Rolling Stone stuff. I like it, but I'm not crazy about it. We're going to go to 1964, 12 by 5. Now, there's, we obviously have a lot of people from the U.S. and the U.K. watching these shows, so there's some different releases. I believe everything I have are all U.S. releases. So if you're from the U.K. and you'll be like, oh, that's not when that came out, that's not what I... All right, just relax. All right, because they, they, back in those days, between the Stones and the Beatles were releasing different things in the UK and the US. All right, so let's just kind of be mindful of that. So, uh, 1964 here in the US. All right, 12 by 5. It's got Time is on my side, right? You got covers of Good Times, Bad Times, Confessing the Blues, Under the Boardwalk. That's fun. Susie Q. It's all over now. All really good covers, actually. Grown Up Wrong. You know, fun, that fun early Beatles album, right? So uh, I guess you can call it kind of their second album, right? At least second here in the U.S. Uh, next up, I'm going to go with English, England's newest hit makers. Okay, their debut from 1964 in the U.K. Also, same release here. Decca Records in the U.K., London Records here. Uh, you know, the Baby Stones, right? <laughs> Not Fade Away, legendary song for them, Route 66. Uh, what else we got on here? I'm a King B. You got Carol. Carol is a hit for them. Can I Get a Witness? Walking the Dog. I Just Want to Make Love to You. Honest I Do. You know, good early 60s rock and roll, right? All right, next up, we're going to go with Now, The Rolling Stones Now. Another U.S. release, released in 1965. Okay. Everybody Needs Somebody to Love. Heart of Stone. Mona. Little Red Rooster, one of my favorites from this album. <clears throat> it's amazing, like how many like different kind of era. You know, they've been around for so long now. It's it's amazing how many different eras they had where their music, you know, sounded fairly different from the one before it. Uh, next up, I'm gonna go with Bridges to Babylon. Okay, I know some of you are like, how I don't can't believe you're ranking some of these later crappy albums over some of those early classics. Well, you know, like I said, a lot of the early stuff, I I like it if it's fun for what it is, but um. I'm not an enormous fan of the early, mid-60s stuff. It's fun, okay? This is actually a pretty decent album, all right? Released in 1997, Virgin Records. Uh, you know, Anybody Seen My Baby? Great song. Great song. You Don't Have to Mean It. Out of Control, all right? Flip the Switch. Thief in the Night. Again, perhaps a couple too many songs, but still... Love the album cover art. Did big business on this tour. I, this good, good Stones rock album from the latter period, latter day. All right, we're going to go back to a couple years ago, right? What was it 2016? Blue and Lonesome. Again, all blues covers, but, you know, it's the first new studio album from the band in, what, 11 years? Pretty notable for that. It's a pretty good bluesy rocking album, I think. Um, band seems pretty fired up on here. Title track is great. I gotta go. Everybody knows about my good thing. Hoodoo blues. Just your fool commit a crime. It's good bluesy. You know, great blues covers done the Stones way. Circa 2016. Next up, I'm gonna go with December's Children and Everybody's. Uh, this is going way way back. All right, way way back. 1965 here in the U.S. London Records. All right. She said, yeah, talking about you, Route 66, singer, not the song, look what you've done, get off of my cloud, right? As tears go by, I'm moving on. Again, you know, between the U.S. and U.K. releases, they were kind of repeating songs and things, so what would show up on one album in the U.K., 
maybe we didn't have a, a U.S. release, and then they would come out with a different titled album that had some of those tracks, some of the tracks. Beatles are doing the same thing. It's like you know, it's kind of messy when you're looking at the early discography of both bands to see all these different releases, you know, based on territory. Uh, next up, I'm going to go with Tattoo You. Yeah, I dig this album. I like this when it came out. All right, this was 1981. Again, the Stones getting pretty prolific right around that time. You know, Some Girls, Emotional Rescue, Tattoo You, boom, boom, boom. Uh, you know, Start Me Up, Hang Fire. Right off the bat, you know, two hot tracks off the top. Good rocking album. I dig it. All right, I'm going to go with the big one to close out the 80s, Steel Wheels. Saw them on this tour. 1989. All right. Sad, sad, sad. Mixed Emotions. What a great song Mixed Emotion is. Oh, what else? Blinded by Love. Rock in a Hard Place. Absolutely love Rock in a Hard Place. So many great tunes on here. You break the spell. Strong album. Kick ass tour. I wasn't even a Stones fan when that album came out and I saw them on that tour. It's, uh, you know, I think I've told this story before that I, I did dislike the Rolling Stones big time up until probably like maybe the mid late 90s. Uh, I'd always been exposed to them, never really liked them. I was always a hard rock and metal guy, and I always was like, ah, screw the Stones, right? You know, sloppy, blah, blah, blah. I heard their songs a million times, all that kind of stuff. I went to the Steel Wheels tour just on a whim because a bunch of guys I worked with at the time were like, hey, you want to go see the Stones at uh, Shea Stadium? We're going to get tickets. And I'm like, ah, eh, sure. For me, it was an excuse to just go and get drunk and have a good time, and that I did. Um, but uh, and then in the ensuing years, I wished that I had not drank so much at that show and really paid more attention to the band, uh, because then I started to really get into them. But thankfully, I did see them uh, two years ago. Was that two years already? Was that a year ago? Yeah, whenever it was. Maybe it was last year. 2019? Yeah, I think it was last year. All right, next up, we're going to go with uh, her, her, their Satanic Majesty's Request. All right, this is their, uh, you know, their psychedelic album. Some people are really into this album. Some people aren't. From 1967. All right, it's got a, it's got a certain charm, you know. Citadel, 2,000 light years from home, 2,000 man, she's a rainbow, you know. Got all the, it's like Mellotrons on here, and uh, you know, kind of uh, sitars and all this kind of really. Trippy, hippy-dippy music, very much different for the Stones at the time. Kind of got, got them ready for what was going to come next. So kind of a oddity in their catalog, but it's got a certain charm to it that I always kind of liked. Next up, we're going to go with uh, Out of Our Heads. All right. Yeah, this is a good one. Released 1965 in the U.S., also same in the U.K. Uh, you know, some really big songs on here course got satisfaction on this album right i'm all right the under assistant west coast promotion man right you got mercy mercy hitchhike the last time this would be the last time play with fire good album as is aftermath okay released one year later okay it's got the legendary paint of black on here of course you got lady jane stupid girl i love stupid girl silly song great song uh under my thumb of course right it's not easy i'm waiting going home you know a lot of good stuff on here this for me is kind of like you know this and uh the next album kind of when the stones are really starting to kind of figure it all out right i'm talking about uh between the buttons 1967 let's spend the night together yesterday's papers ruby tuesday my Obsession, Who's Been Sleeping Here, Miss Amanda Jones, Something Happened to Me Yesterday, and others. Very strong album. All right, now there's that. Now for me is where the magic really, really occurs. Okay, I know some might disagree and might claim that some of the ones that I've already mentioned are pretty magical. And yeah, they have their magical moments. But for me, the next, uh, let's see, uh, eight are, you know, primo Rolling Stones. Uh, some Girls. It's going to be next up for me. I dig this album a lot. At least in 1978. <sighs> So many great songs on here. When the Whip Comes Down, the title track is just amazing. Shattered, Beast of Burden. I mean, come on. Great album. 
kind of, uh, yeah, so I guess a comeback for the Stones. I probably should have included this in there. Comeback, uh, in the comeback episode I did. Uh, because, you know, kind of the Stones in flux a little bit, not selling a lot of, ton of albums throughout the mid-late 70s, and then they came with this, and psh, again, kind of urban sound and kind of a lot of soul and R&B going on in this album. But I think it really works. A uh, little hints of, you know, disco, which was still fairly popular at the time. But I dig That's a very listenable album. Um, love it. Love the title track. Next up, I'm going to go with uh, Goat's Head Soup from 1973. I'm a big fan of this album. I know there are some people that are just not as into this album or the one that came after it, uh, especially when they talk about the uh, Mick Taylor years. But I think this is a terrific album. I think Dancing with Mr. D is a great song. A uh, hundred years ago, fantastic. Uh do 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 heartbreaker fantastic song all right winter can you hear the music star 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 that's a great great album great album i think some fantastic guitar playing from mctaylor on it good songs it's rocking dig that album as i do with uh, the one that came right after 1974's it's only rock and roll the last one with mctaylor if You Can't Rock Me, terrific song. Good hard rocking song. Ain't Too Proud to Beg, great. It's only rock and roll, but I like it. Legendary song, the most famous song from here. Uh, Till the Next Goodbye, Time Waits for No One, my sleeper song from this album. It's kind of mellow, intoxicating, and then you get this great, lengthy, amazing guitar solo from Mick Taylor, kind of Santana-ish, right? Just a fantastic song. Uh, Dance Little Sister, another great song. Uh, Fingerprint File. If you really want to be my friend, I don't know. I just really dig this album. I think that and Goat's Head Soup are probably two of their most underrated classics in the catalog. All right, next up, I'm going to go with an album that if you would have asked me 10, 15 years ago, I would have ranked it way down. But I am late to the game on this one, and I finally now realize what a fantastic album this is, as kind of self-indulgent as it is at times. But it's just got some great songs in it. It's got a different feel than a lot of the other albums do in the catalog. And that's uh, Exile on Main Street, okay, from 1972. We all know the stories behind the recording of this album. And, you know, the band socked away in a rental place in France and all the debauchery going on. And, you know, and how, you know, Keith Richards, uh, as much of a mess he was, he was the one who was there 24-7 working on this album. So a lot of people claim this is almost like kind of Keith's almost solo album to an extent, right? But man, so many great songs on here. A lot of good, like acoustic, bluesy country rock type of tunes, because he was, of course, hanging out with uh, guys from the Flying Burrito Brothers, right? Rocks off, great tune. Rip This Joint, Shake Your Hips, Tumbling Dice, great song. Sweet Virginia, Torn and Frayed, man, Love and Cup, Happy, amazing Happy. Oh, geez. So many other songs. All Down the Line, Shine a Light. God, so. I mean, you know, the whole album is just is fantastic. It's rootsy, it's bluesy. Like I said, it's got that kind of uh, West Coast country rock thing going on. I don't know. I dig it. It's it's a, that for me is a great summertime album. That's like a sitting out by the pool, got the barbecue going, crank up Exile on Main Street. Perfect for that type of atmosphere. All right, gonna go. With Beggar's Banquet next. I, I kind of debated a couple here, but uh, I think this is a really good album. 1968. All right, probably the last big play from Brian Jones, all right, in the band. Sympathy for the Devil, No Expectations, Parachute Woman, Street Fighting Man, Stray Cat Blues, Factory Girl, Salt of the Earth. I mean, top to bottom, Prodigal Son, Dear Doctor, you know. A classic album with a bizarre album cover that really works. That's that's number three for me, right? Number two, we're going to go with Let It Bleed from 1969. Although Mr. Jones is uh, on here a little bit. He basically kind of checked out by this point in time. And, you know, Mick Taylor's here on a couple tracks. But uh, a classic Stones album. You know, the title track, Let It Bleed, Love in Vain, killer song. It's got the bluesy, rambunctious Midnight Rambler, which would become like epic live in concert. All right, you got Gimme Shelter, for my money, the greatest Rolling Stones song of all time. Uh, you got The Silver, okay, another kind of bluesy country rock tune. Can't Always Get What You Want. Live With Me, another great rocking tune. Uh, Monkey Man, another, for me, top five Rolling Stones song of all time. Love Monkey Man. And Country Honk. 
great, great album. For some, might be the, the best. All right, it's I, I, I wouldn't argue it too much, except you know, Sticky Fingers for me from 1971. Got to be it for me. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this album, and it's been my favorite Rolling Stones album ever since I kind of really got into them. Right, you know, Brown Sugar, the underrated and killer sway. Great hard rock and tune from the band. I just love that song. Uh, you know, you got Wild Horses, right? Can't You Hear Me Knocking? Extended, lengthy hard rock and tune with, again, that great Mick Taylor guitar solo sounding like Carlos Santana a little bit. Killer. Maybe a little Peter Green thrown in there as well. Uh, you Got a Move. You Got Bitch. Another, for me, top five, top ten Rolling Stones song. I Got the Blues. The Incredible Sister Morphine. Great acoustic blues, man. Not uh, just killer song dead flowers dead flowers is such an irresistible kind of country rock song it it doesn't get enough credit i think love dead flowers i love when they would play that live and and have both of them you know jagger and richards kind of singing along next to each other great stuff and then of course the uh melancholy closer moonlight mile which is a killer song all right uh now that we're already 20 something minutes into this i'm not going to kind of well maybe i should just read them out to you right i'll just kind of go through how i rank them but i urge everybody to rank them on your own uh starting at number one i'm not gonna I forget how many are here uh sticky fingers at the top then followed by let it bleed beggar's banquet okay exile on main street uh it's only rock and roll goat's head soup uh some girls god with the great miss you that's you know Ah, I miss you such a great song. Uh, Between the Buttons, Aftermath, Out of Our Heads, Their Satanic Majesty's Request, Steel Wheels, Tattoo You, December's Children, uh, Blue and Lonesome, All right, uh, Bridges to Babylon, Now, First Album, 12 by 5, Voodoo Lounge, Emotional Rescue, Black and Blue, Undercover, Dirty Work, and A Bigger Bang. Okay, Not an easy catalog to rank because... Some truly great albums, some very good albums, and some kind of unspectacular albums, right? But all of them have standout tracks. Uh, I'm sure a lot of these albums mean different things to different people. That's kind of what, you know, the message I always want to get. It's like there's to some people who were, you know, teenagers in the early mid-60s, those first couple of albums are going to mean a lot more to someone who grew up in the 70s or the 80s or later, right? Because we attach and latch on to albums that were big when we were kids, okay, that we grew up with. You know, in my in my situation, I didn't get into the Stones till I was, you know, much later in life, but I gravitated towards those 70s albums a lot more, late 60s and the early mid 70s albums cuz I'm just a huge fan of music from that period, but those are a lot of the a lot of those the more popular songs were the ones that I grew up hearing on the radio from those albums. So, that's kind of how I ranked them. Um, but Great band, legendary band, a lot of good, lot of good music here. So curious to see how you guys rank them. Give me your top five, give me your top ten, rank the whole catalog if you like. That's totally cool too. I do want to mention a couple of compilations like I uh, mentioned earlier. Flowers, okay, which came out. Ooh, I think they put this out in the late '60s, early '70s. It's got some you know singles and alternate takes and things like that. So it's got Ruby Tuesdays on here. All right, have you seen your mother, baby? Standing in the shadow. Let's spend the night together. All right, the great Lady Jane, out of time, my girl, Backstreet Girl, please go home, Mother's Little Helper, take it or leave it, ride on baby, and uh, sitting on a fence. This is really good if you don't have a lot of those songs on other okay albums, studio albums, which is why I got this, because a lot of that stuff I don't have uh, elsewhere. And then you've got the Metamorphosis collection, which again has all sorts of interesting stuff. Uh, it's got out of time, don't lie to me, some things just stick in your mind, each and every day of the year, heart of stone. I'd much rather be with the boys walking through the sleep city. We're wasting time. Try a little harder. I don't know why. If you let me, jiving sister Fanny, downtown Susie, family, memo from Turner was one of the reasons why I got this, which is a, a song that Jagger used in the performance movie that he was in. It's a good, kind of quick, kind of brief telling. I think it's on just under three minutes, but it's got the Ry Cooter on guitar, snarling heavy rock tune, right? Memo from Turner and I'm going down. So, you know, worth these two are worth getting because, again, these are songs that you're not going to get a lot of other places, so worth having. So, anyway, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we are on YouTube all the time. Uh, coming up tomorrow, we've got Jack Toledano coming back on the show. We are going to give our top ten songs of U.S. power metal band Iced Earth. Okay, I am also working on my top Mellotron albums list for you. 
Uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to be, 20 or 25, and there's mostly going to be prog albums, so if you're a fan of old school prog or even new school prog, and you just love that the holy keyboard tape machine called the Mellotron, right? You love all those ominous, spooky, and beautiful sounds. Uh, I'm going to be picking out some of the albums released in rock history that featured that instrument, okay, as a, as a big part of their repertoire. Uh, so, you know, Moody Blues, King Crimson, Genesis... Uh, the Italian prog stuff, I mean, you know all the usual suspects. So I'm going to kind of pick out my top album releases that feature the Mellotron. That's been a long time coming, so that's coming this weekend as well. Uh, I'm sure with other stuff. Oh, we got a Monster's Den uh, episode coming up this weekend as well for all you old school classic horror and monster fans out there. Right? I'm not quite sure which film I'm going to do yet, but uh, that'll be coming as well. So uh, lots happening, guys. Lots happening and more to come. So uh, we'll see you real soon. All right? Take care. Bye-bye.